More Ryzen 7000 leaks are headed your way. T-Mobile and Starlink are pairing up and HyperX is getting into the monitor game. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is gonna be talking about some new leaked benchmarks coming out on the Ryzen 7 7700X, which we're expecting it to be one of AMD's most popular offerings on their next generation chips. This is coming from a reviewer who seems to have gotten his hand on the new CPUs and is putting out a couple of benchmarks right now, mostly for Cinebench. But what we're seeing from this is that the scores are actually pretty good. For the 7700X, it hit 773 points on single core and 7701 on multi-core. So that's a lot of sevens for the 7700X CPU. It's, it's, it's a lot, That's it's too much actually. So to compare that to what's currently out on the market with the Ryzen 5000, series, you can see that the single core score beats everything that AMD has out right now. However, it does not beat the leaked benchmarks for the upcoming Raptor Lake chips by Intel, which look to be better in single core performance. If we look at multi-core, the 7700X is obviously worse than the 16 core 5950X, but is actually significantly better than the 5800X, but again, still loses out to the 13700K, which you could argue also has 16 core but if Intel keeps their pricing structure similar, this is gonna be the direct competitor to the 7700X. Since the Ryzen 7 and the Intel Core i7 lineups have typically gone head to head towards each other. So this could lead to some very interesting setups. AMD is going for just actually improving things. Clock speeds are higher, their IPC is higher. A 20% improvement is actually pretty good year on year. I like to see this, but what might not be enough is the fact that Intel, number one, does appear to have really good single core uplifts with their new Alder Lake technology. So that's coming in Raptor Lake, but then also because they're stuffing in more efficiency cores, they're making it so that it's a much better multi-core powerhouse. So it could potentially be that certain AMD CPUs are better for gaming and certain Intel CPUs are better for productivity, which as I've mentioned before, is a flippity flop from how it was previously, where AMD was the better for productivity and Intel was the better for gaming. It looks like there's gonna be a decent reckoning happening here. So new benchmarks indicating very good performance from AMD. I'm excited for this uplift. We cannot dismiss the amount of remarkable work that goes in from engineers to make it so that you continually push the boundaries of what's possible in consumer desktop chips. I love to see it. It might not be enough to beat Intel at roughly the same price point, but if Intel decides to keep their prices high or AMD comes out with some really decent pricing this generation, which they did not do for the 5000 series on launch, then we could see a much different competition lineup going on. But we only have a few more days to wait in order to find out from AMD officially. August 29th is gonna be the announcement dates for these chips. AMD is gonna have a live stream for that. We don't know when they're actually gonna be coming out and we also don't have any information on when third party reviewers are gonna get these hand, their hands on these chips, but it could be possible that they will come out with third party reviews this coming Monday. So we'll have to wait and see, but it's looking pretty hopeful. And if you've been hoping for a Sony e Xbox Elite controller for the PlayStation 5, well, Sony announced it over at Gamescom. They wanna introduce you to the DualSense Edge, which is gonna be their premier flagship controller. It's gonna have a lot of the features that people have come to expect from professional grade controllers like being able to customize the buttons, remap everything, setting stick sensitivity, adjusting dead zones, adjusting travel distance, all of that kind of stuff, making sure the triggers are good, saving multiple profiles so that you can change them depending on what game that you're playing. Also changeable stick caps and back buttons to make it so that it's actually fitting your preference as well as just a different ergonomic setup. And then also a USB type C braided cable that has a more connected connector that goes in so that it makes sure it doesn't pop out just like a regular USB-C cable would so that you can have the lowest of latencies by being hardwired to your console. So it does seem like Sony is taking this seriously. The DualSense Edge does appear to have a lot of the features that people want. It's kind of hard to say when this is gonna come out or what the price point is going to be at this point because Sony hasn't officially unveiled it. But considering the Xbox Elite controller goes for about $180, we could likely expect Sony to land somewhere in there, especially considering the regular DualSense controller are about $70, which 
is really expensive, especially for the poor battery life that they had. Uh, Microsoft still has the win on that, making it so that you could use AA batteries and just swap those out easily, as opposed to Sony's paltry battery life that they include on the DualSense. But let me know, are you interested in a DualSense Edge? Does this appeal to you at all? Are you playing? games that you need a much better controller for either on PlayStation. Obviously, you would be able to use this on a PC. So just let me know if you uh, if you're interested in a Sony professional grade controller. And I know you're interested in crypto stocks because you watch it every day. We see the retention graph of when people watch hot news. and You guys don't skip it, which you know, okay, cool. Crypto, Bitcoin up 1.25% to be at 21,710. Had a little bit of a lull during most of the day, but up slightly now. Ethereum up 2.3% to be at 1682. And Dogecoin up less than 1% to be at 6.9 cents. And Reese, you better be up. You weren't here yesterday for UFD deals. I didn't do anything to you, I promise. I have two Ts. There's no animosity here, buddy. You get back to UFD deals. Hey friends, welcome back to UFD deals. We bring you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Despite what Brett might've said, he has paid the ransom. I have sent his tea back. Although I did send it back through the South African postal system. So he'll be getting that back in six to eight months, if ever. But if you want something delivered fast, you can pick up today's deal through Amazon. First up, we have the EVGA XR1 Pro Capture Card, which is capable of recording at 4K 30 or 1440p 60 FPS with up to 4K 60 HDR pass through. It's currently going for only 99.99, which is 55% off. And if you need a place to store all those recordings, the Samsung 970 Evo Plus SSD is currently going for $77.99 for the 500 gig version. Don't forget you can find all these deals and more linked in the video description. And back to Brett with two T's. Reese, I can't believe you would say that to me on Kyler's day of birth. Previously, he was it was yesterday. But how could you, Reese? That's bad of you. And how could SpaceX and T-Mobile partner up? That's what I'm wondering tonight. We're getting into a live stream from these two companies to announce some sort of collaboration that's gonna be taking place between the two the, 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 the two internet peoples? SpaceX Starlink is supposed to be the space internet. T-Mobile also offers 5G at home. So some of the speculation is that it could potentially be like a home internet product where maybe like, T-Mobile customers get a discount on Starlink or potentially there's like some 5G backup for Starlink. That would be cool. I, I would kind of like that because that would be tremendously helpful for our Cannonball for the Cure charity event that we do that we're going to do this year. Actually, I made the official announcement on meme review yesterday, but we have set the date for the upcoming Cannonball for the Cure charity stream year two. And it's an annual event now, we're doing it, and that's gonna be taking place on October 21st, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern, so mark your calendars for that. But uh, Starlink and then 5G backup could potentially be like the best thing ever for pulling off that live stream. I would love to see that happen. Who knows? We'll, we'll have to wait and see. I'll keep you updated once we find out exactly what it is on tomorrow's episode of Hot News. And we're also going to be finding out more from Apple on their iPhone event, which is going to be taking place on September 7th. Now that's officially coming out from the company and the invitation words are far out space themes somehow. Maybe they'll come out with like a midnight black iPhone. That would be pretty cool. I'd love to see it, but we're expecting four different iPhones to launch. We're expecting a brand new Apple Watch to be announced as well. It's supposed to be a pro model, which I would absolutely love. I've been looking to upgrade mine for many years and I haven't found the right excuse to do it yet. So this might be the time where I switch over, but you might be switching over to Samsung for your next SSD because they're announcing the 990 Pro, but Unlike uh, the thoughts and rumors that were going around this SSD before it was announced, a lot of people were speculating this was gonna be a PCI Express Gen 5 SSD. Samsung is here to quell those rumors, squash them, quash them. It's, it's only gonna make PCI Express Gen 4. It's kind of sad, but it's going to be really fast. So it's going to have up to 7,500 megabytes per second read speeds, roughly 7,000 on the right speeds. It looks gamery. It's got racing stripes. That's how you know it's fast. It's going to come with a heat sink or without a heat sink. It's going to come in one or two terabytes this year and four terabytes coming out next year. And it's going to have DRAM capacity, all of that good stuff. I'm a little ambivalent about it. Obviously, we still need faster Gen 4 SSDs since most of them don't take up the full bandwidth of the buy four lane. So this could potentially continue to push that. I would love to see more Gen 5 SSDs. I would love to see Samsung's version, especially since the 980 Pro was so good 
when it actually came out. But the pricing on this is 179 for one terabyte, 309 for two terabyte, and the four terabyte yet to be announced. But it's also supposed to have 1400K input and 1550K output operations per second, which according to Samsung is a 55% increase over the 980 Pro. So this is supposed to be a heckin' fast SSD. It might be best served uh, for you to put in a computer that you never use because you don't actually need an SSD that fast, but you think you do and you convinced yourself of it. So you bought it anyways, and then you realize, hey, I'm just playing Stardew Valley all the time. Why do I need this blazing fast SSD? And then you have a good look in the mirror when there's a loading screen and you're like, I don't actually need this, but you can't actually come to tell yourself the truth of that in the light of day, which you might be able to illuminate a little bit more because HyperX is coming out with gaming monitors. The Armada lineup of gaming monitors is now their official setup. It's coming with desk arms and desk mounts. It doesn't have a stand, which is an intriguing move for them to go for, but it's going to come in 25 and 27 inch varieties, either 1080p or 1440p respectively for those, and then 240 hertz and 165 hertz on all of those with the 27 inch having VESA HDR 400 compatibility. The 25 inch will not have VESA HDR 400, even though HyperX says that it has 400 nits peak brightness, and they're going to cost $450 and $500 again, respectively, with the mounts and the mount add-on being $110 and $80 again, respectively. I use that word a lot during that segment, but it does look like HyperX is showing up with a pretty decent introduction into the monitor game. There's a lot of companies getting into monitors, like a lot. And um, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I don't know if it's gonna be price competitive for all of them. I'm not sure we need all of these monitors, but they're making them and they're making money, hopefully. That's the plan for the capitalists. So we're gonna, we're gonna do another capitalism here tomorrow. I'm gonna come out with another episode of Hot News so that I can make money to pay my employees and feed my family. So see you back here for capitalism news tomorrow. Yeehaw.